about if I went really forward and really open, the opposite to that gentleman we're looking at, where is he now likely to hit the ground out in front? Mm. So the opposite would be this. We're trying to get him a little bit feeling like this a little bit more. Hence why I think it's important to feel like you have a little bit more, uh, I guess, openness, if you like, with the chest at address, which will help encourage ball first, divot after. Welcome back to the channel guys, Kerry Gray here today at Sentosa Golf Club in Singapore with their national coach, Matt Ballard. Matty, thanks for coming along mate. Thanks for having me on your channel. Mate, we are here sweating it out, helping you guys at home with your short game. We're gonna do some bunker play, we're gonna do some pitch shots. We're gonna analyze some errors that we see with the common golfer and help you guys at home shoot some lower scores. Let's get stuck in. Okay, Matty, so in this one here, we've got a player who's really struggling with not only hitting the ground too much, but hitting the equator of the ball and seeing this one go along the ground, sometimes the top shot, sometimes over the back into the water over there, right? In all the skull, yep. Yeah. We, see, we see it all the time, and so many players place a huge amount of emphasis on hitting the ball longer, thinking they need to get their irons and compression better, but simply by improving the quality of the strike around the greens, the players can lower their scores by so much, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean... You, know, you want to get that chip shot onto the green and have a putt. That's the first step for most average club golfers, not having another chip after a chip. Yeah, and the three basic rules of breaking 90 for 18 holes for most players is put your ball in play off the tee, get the ball on in one shot when you have a, a possibility of doing so around the green, yep. right? It doesn't matter if it's a putt, just getting it on the green. Mm. And number three is not three putting. Yep. Right? You do those, it's very tough to shoot over 90 for 18 holes. Absolutely. Right? So what we're looking at this play here, We've got some real setup issues here, right? Yep. And this is where uh, the majority of the inconsistency for this player here is coming from, yep. right? So we can see here that his head uh, is well behind the golf ball yep. at the moment of address, and you can see his hips are forward. He's almost got this right knee kicked in quite considerably as well. Yeah. So what I want you to do is when you set up to this one here, I want you to kind of recreate what you see here, and we'll just talk about the effect that that would have, all things being equal, on your ability to strike the ground in the same spot and getting good contact. Yeah, sure. So let's say, I mean, this gentleman here has definitely got his head. If you look in the front view, he's got his head a little bit behind the ball. Hips, pelvis is a little bit forward. And he's got a bit too much weight on this right side. So, you know, that's going to have an effect on his low point control and where he hits the ground. And if I was to exaggerate this and make a swing, it feels like I'm going to hit it a long way behind the ball. Now, if he's afraid of hitting the ground and duffing his shots, he's not going to hit the ground here. He will probably retract his arms like this or so. And then, as we just talked about, he'll hit the low one along the ground. Mm, not really confidence inducing at all. Yeah. So we, we can see a plethora of errors that can come as a result. We can yeah. hit the ones where it, it hits the ground and stops if they're using leading edge. Yep. It can bounce into the ball, get the drop kick. Uh, it can hit the equator itself. Yes. So with a simple strategy that nearly every golfer can employ, no matter what level, and we're going to give them some great reference points mm. here from the face-on view mm. of how to actually set up to encourage all things being equal, a better contact, right? So we'll briefly touch on a little exercise at the end that you can work on to ensure that you're hitting the ground in the right spot. Mm. But let's just talk about setup and how we would adjust this player to encourage that. Yeah, I think I think first and foremost, you know, the, the skinny shot or the heavy shot, they're very closely related. I call them the ugly brother and sister. You know, they're just, if you're not hitting it heavy, you're hitting it thin. And I think it's a bit of a revolving circle for a lot of golfers. They go through a stage where they're hitting a lot of heavy shots and they don't like that. So then they go through a stage of sculling it and it just viciously keeps going back. But as you say, definitely we can make some adjustments to the setup for any golfer out there that can actually improve the high likelihood and the predictability of actually getting ball first contact, which is really what we're striving for when we're chipping here. So this gentleman here, as, you, as we mentioned before, is a little bit too far back. Mm -hmm. I like to go, try and get all players really stacked on top. You know, I like to get the players to start with elbows by their side, um, take a bend from the waist, chin down, straight down, quite a narrow stance. But then the last minute, this is the key part that a lot of players miss, and particularly for this gentleman who's a little bit too far back, I'd like to see, feel like his sternum is a little bit more forward of centre, which is maybe about an inch or so in front. So just set up and do that again for me. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to hang this golf club vertically up in line with Matty is there. Yep. And now show us what you just did then. Yeah, so I'm just simply bending. I've got my elbows by my side. I'm not changing too much. And then I'm going to go down into a forward bend position. Mm -hmm. I slowly drop my elbows and the club head into the ground. Now I'm in a very, very neutral position. I can hit a lot of shots from this position. Now, granted, you can hit a lot of other shots with different setups, but for this particular one, we're trying to improve the quality of strike. So this is going to ensure that I hit the ground in the same spot all the time. To guarantee that I can collect the ball first, 
if you thought about it, if I went really forward and really open, the opposite to that gentleman we're looking at, where is he now likely to hit the ground out in front? Mm. So the opposite would be this. We're trying to get him a little bit feeling like this a little bit more. Hence why I think it's important to feel like you have a little bit more, uh, I guess, openness, if you like, with the chest at address, which will help encourage ball first, divot after. Yeah, and we see, we see that um, when Matty does that by shifting and twisting his body slightly onto his lead side, places a little bit more pressure on that front foot, which is yep. very important for getting the low point. Yep. And at the end of the day, the uh, the heavy shots and the thin shots, they all come as a result of the low point or the bottom of the swing being too far Just behind. Just too far behind, correct. So if you look at this as a all or nothing, mm. the more I'm twisted over here, the more likely I'm behind, the more yep. likely I'm over here. It's a game of pluses and minuses. Yep. We just need a little bit more of that forward movement, right? Yeah. So uh, go through that process once more and set up to that ball for me. Sure. Okay, wonderful. So that looks really good. So we can see that once you've done that, where do you feel like your pressure is at address? Like between your left foot and your right foot there? Yeah, it's definitely a little bit more on the left side. I would say closer to 60%, but it's definitely not on the right side. Yeah, okay. And then from that, uh, let's set up, and let's just hit a stock shot down there for us. Sure. We can see the first two, one's just in front, one's over the back. So let's go find the middle <laughs> boundaries right. of those. Under pressure now. Perfect, contact sounded great. Hey, not bad. Now. Maybe. You're a high level golfer yourself and you're a, a national coach, so that there is bread and butter. But let's say that a player does get themselves into this position, they've recorded themselves, they've used some feedback and mirror to ensure they've set up in this stacked position like you've just shown us. Yep. What if they're still struggling with their strike? They're hitting behind, they're hitting it thin. Uh, as a result of compensations for too long that they had to make, mm from being in that position. How would you get them to almost uh, rejig their action to accommodate this new setup? Yeah, so once they get this, let's assume this person's got the setup down pat and we're really happy with what it looks like. This person is typically afraid of hitting the ground. Yeah. Now, I try to encourage the player to hit the ground. If they're hitting it thin all the time, it's actually where they're hitting the ground is the wrong spot. You mentioned before about the low point being too far behind. So what I would do really simply would suggest to the player and I don't have a tee with me right now, but I would put a tee about an inch in front of the ball here and stick it right in the ground yep. until the player is set up. And what I want them to do is hit the tee. So with the base of the club, with the back of the club. So in effect, it would feel like they're uh, bringing the tee out of the ground. That then, as you mentioned before about pressure, will help that person naturally just pressure a little bit more forward without giving them the instruction to do so. Mm. All I'm doing is giving a visual cue saying, can you take the tee out of the ground, which is this far in front? That will ensure more ball first contact ground after, get the back of the club hitting the ground, and they'll hit a pretty good shot. Great, mate. So Super let's, simple. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's very easy instructions for everyone at home to follow. Uh, let's hit one more, do a couple of rehearsals, get yourself into that setup position so we can see how you did that. Sure. And then go ahead and hit yep, it. Yep, I go back into this position, elbow down. And then right at the last minute, I just turn a little bit to the left, which it feels like I'm going to hit the ground here. Now, I don't have a tee, but I'm going to imagine that there's a tee here, and I want to feel like I'm just brushing it like so. See if I can do better than the last one. Okay. Awesome stuff. Good job. Thanks.